Hi, I'm Dan. My wife and I own a company, just a small camper conversion company called Rome Overland Vehicles, where we've been converting Sprinter vans into campers for the last couple of years. We actually took a year long trip and did over 50,000 miles in North America, Canada, Alaska. And now we are settled down and been busting out a couple vans. And now we're moving into bigger vehicles. I really want to get into expedition, overlanding, um, more off-road heavy duty vehicles. So uh, this is kind of the beginning of the series of videos that I'm going to do on the Unimog. Uh, we have purchased a 1990 U1300L. It is a six cylinder turbo diesel uh, with the high speed axles. Uh, so this is one of the videos that I've, I wanted and my wife and I wanted when we were looking at buying a Unimog. I wanted really detailed, just walk around videos just to see what really a Unimog is and entails. So that's kind of what this series is and I really hope it helps somebody. In this video, I'm going to show you what our Unimog is in its current state. Uh, we have some pretty big plans for this thing. We plan eventually to rip off the ambulance back and do a composite back. Um, and we also plan on redoing the entire cab. So we're going to add air conditioning, sound deadening material, insulation, radio, new seats, new carpet, new headliner. Uh, we have plans to rip out the entire dash area as well and redo all of that. So when we're done, this is going to look like a new rig. Um, so I'll give you a full detailed walk around. We'll start with the interior first and then we'll go outside. Let's start with the door latch. First thing, I've seen some people have some issues getting it out of a Unimog. But on the very front of the handle, there's a little tiny red button that you push and open. You can see the button right there. On the door itself, pretty basic manual controls. We've got a little cubby there in there. Tools to open the hood and to open the battery box. It's just a square bit. Haven't quite figured that out, but I'm pretty sure that it's an adjustment for my headlights. When we're towing something, it'll actually change the angle. Windshield washer fluid. That did not work when we got it. There was a kink in the system, and I'll show that when we're under the hood. This will actually dim all the lights. So the gear indicator has a light on it, even when there's no headlights on. And when you turn that, that will actually turn those lights off. That switches the headlights. Uh, now to go to the gauges, oil pressure. There's two arms in there. This is the air system. There's an onboard air compressor. This Unimog has an air over hydraulic system that builds pressure and they use it for shifting. They use it for braking. They use it for uh, the lockers. So when you start up in the morning, right now I have an air leak and it'll go down to about five bar. You need between 12 and what is that, 18. So it'll sit there and it'll build up. That's what that little warning light is. It's letting you know that you do not have sufficient air pressure. So I was reading that there's a stop at about four to five bar. So it will always maintain a reserve if you have a leak. Um, like mine does now. So in the morning, I have to start the Unimog and let it warm up. That's their, like, it's their 24 volt accessory port. Haven't quite figured these out. Two buttons, almost like there would be a fuse there, but I haven't figured that out yet. Tack, this is your dimmer for the dash. Here's your speedo and kilometers. There's a clock in there. I'm sure you can hear it ticking. Uh, this Unimog has 61,163 kilometers. You can use this little tiny key and open this up and do adjustments. It's the smallest key I've ever seen. It's crazy. And then your warning lights. Brakes, four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive with dual lockers, parking brake. Haven't figured that one out yet. Looks important though. Batteries, high beams, turn signals. There are stairs on the side your ABS warning. Um, I've gone through some of this on the other video, but this is more detailed than I'm going to be doing. So when these lights are on, if you're driving at night, you can fold that down and that'll actually help dim them. And if you really want them dim, you pull this one down and then there's only little tiny holes there that'll show just a little bit of light through. So what we have here is the four wheel drive selector. This position here is two wheel drive. This is four wheel drive. This is four wheel drive with dual lockers. When you go into four wheel drive with dual lockers, 
the Unimog will actually send air pressure into the drivetrain. The drivetrain on a Unimog is completely sealed. So drive shaft, axles, portal axles, and what that'll do is actually pumps in a couple PSI of air into your system to make it a positive air pressure. So if for some reason you have a leak and you're fording water, then you won't have any water come into the, the drivetrain system. Right now, currently just parked. And while I'm filming this, I have it in the four wheel drive because in two wheel drive, it has since developed a leak. This one sat around for a while. So as it sits around, as things start getting used, things are gonna start wearing out. So that will be something I need to address. This was a switch for the ambulance lights. This one was an ambulance for the UN. Okay, on to these controls. All right, this is the HVAC system for the Unimog. I own a Unimog and I own the manual and this is still confusing. Footwell, heating and air, open, closed, cold, hot, this little red circle. This is for the defroster, triangle up, defroster open, on, off. This is footwell, pointing down triangle, I guess. That's kind of what I'm reading. Open, closed, fresh air, not fresh air. Control knob, one through three. This opens up as well for more air coming out. And it's got defroster vents here, down there, down there. Glove box, it's got a reading light. You can turn that up, turns it on, off. It's got a little latch. Nothing fancy in there. Passenger door, same thing. Just like any other manual car, clutch, brake, gas. Nice little ashtray. We've got an eight speed manual transmission, one through eight. Basically one through four is low and five through eight is high gear. So we start out in fifth gear when we're going. Um, so far reverse. Uh, I've heard you can get all gears in reverse. I really have only ever done it in fourth gear parking brake. To engage, you lift it up and pull it back. This is the battery cutoff. So if you want to cut off the battery, turn it off, battery's cut off. This is your forward and reverse gear selector. There's a V pointing down, forward is down, reverse is back. So be careful what gear you're in when you start off. There's no indicator on the dash, so good luck. Got an ether pump. So in the morning when it's cold, you can pump this and there's a little tiny container, just a couple ounces of ether that's underneath the hood that you can pump into the motor to help start it. This is the idle control. So you can, in the morning, crank this and it'll actually turn up the idle. And then when it's warmed up, you can turn your idle back down. This is also how you turn a Unimog off by pushing it all the way down. And that will actually turn the motor off. I'll show you that. Okay, let's get the Unimog started. I'll show you to turn it off. You can turn the key off, but the motor is still running. To shut the motor off, You push down on that piece. This one was a military truck, so you can see brackets everywhere. Brackets under the seats, brackets under the dash. So we got lots of brackets to remove. Headliner that's falling down, dome lights. All of this will be replaced. We have plans on tearing this all out. It's kind of a cool feature. So you have your sun visor, but it also folds down about half the length of the window. You don't want to see that guy in front of you? Let's fold this down. All right, let's talk about the hatch. It's actually our sunroof now. Two latches, one here, one here. Pull down and turn, and the whole thing lifts up. That slides over in lifted state, and I'll show you how it latches up there. As we come out here, you can see it in its position over there. If you take this handle, and you can see it lowering down. Now it's in a locked position. So now you can drive with this hatch open. That's where the ambulance lights used to be. Got those sealed up temporary for now, but we will be welding those holes back up. All right, let's head to the passenger seat. There's a latch here. This whole thing lifts up. 
paper towels in there right now to hold this tray. When we first got the Unimog, there was a terrible rattle and it was this rattling. So if you have a rattle in your Unimog, check this tray. On the back side of the passenger seat, there's a latch here and this whole thing folds down and there's a position there for that to latch into. That's it latched. And now that gate access to stand on that, to stand out of the hatch. While this is down, it'll give us good view behind the passenger seat. This area, there's not a lot of room inside the cab of a Unimog, but we have plans on this. These seats are gonna be replaced. And when they do get replaced, this area will probably be put in the electronics to convert the current 24 volt system into a 12 volt. So accessories, radio, driving lights, all that stuff will be back here. Fuse box, all that will be mounted back here. And then eventually we'll be cutting into these to do a pass through into our habitat. In case you ever have the issue of getting this thing undone like we did the first time, there's a latch under here. All right, let's go open that hood. Let's do the hood. Use the hood release tool. And it goes into these holes. You can open the hood as simple as just two turns, two quarter turns. One. And two. And then the hood has a latch right here. Lift the hood, push the little thing down towards the grill. This will come down and attach in the grill. Removing the hood fully is pretty easy. There's just three more turns in here. Pull hook, taking the grill, just as easy. There's only two. Pull it towards you and lift up. Hood, super lightweight, it's fiberglass. This whole cab tilts forward so that we can gain access to the transmission. I have never actually tilted it forward, but there is instructions in the manual to do so. I'm pretty sure that's what some of these latches are for in this hinge point. It's just kind of an overview of the motor. Winter washer fluid. The pump forts down here. When we got it, ours did not work. We followed the line up into there, and that's where it was kinked. As soon as I fix that, then we're good to go. Airbox cleaner. This is your air compressor. When we got it, there's a couple of belts that were out of adjustment. They were pretty loose. As you can see, they're pretty dry rotted, so all the belts are gonna be replaced. I'm gonna do a whole video on that. The air compressor, we actually had to scoot it over just a couple millimeters. There's just four little bolts that does that. And then a tensioning bolt there. Fuel filter, inline fuel filter. There's the ether. Check your oil. Six, it's a six cylinder turbo diesel. Kind of gives you an idea. Blower motor. So that's pretty easy to replace if you need to. Here's a step under here. So you can gain access up there pretty easily. Snorkel. Factory. Says you can go up to four feet of standing water. It's right there, 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 there are for window covers. I've seen pictures of some Unimogs, especially these ambulance ones, with side mounted ones that cover these windows as well. This one came with like plate steel to cover those. These are the tires that came on it. Uh, Date Co. 2008. Wear wise, they're fine, but we have some drive out issues and a couple flat spots. So, we're getting these replaced hopefully in the next week or two. 
It's the Continental MPT-81, I believe is what it is. Uh, 365 I think is the size. It's a good look of the interior. Let's go crawling around under here for a little bit. So you can see some of the things, little surface rust on there I need to fix. Tie rod ends, ball joints, a couple things I need to get repaired. Good look at a portal axle. As you can see the center of the axle is not center of the wheel. It gains a few inches of ground clearance. Let's get to the other side. Open that with the tool. Two 12 volt batteries. We have plans to take all of this, powder coat it, get it all sandblasted, repair any rust. While we're right here, you can see the connection. That's electrical connection for this box, this habitat back here. We don't have it connected up right now. We'll be doing a fully independent electrical system back there. Moving on to the diesel tank. Those steps you see right there. German engineers. Automatically come down. There's a little switch right there. And if you look under here, there's a little pneumatic actuator under there and a spring. So when you shut the door, I've been working on these. I've been adjusting that spring, cleaning up some of these edges, cleaning up some of the joints. When I got it, it didn't close all the way, but we're almost there. We've got two jerry can holders there. While we're under here, we'll look at some of the air system. The manual says that daily you should drain any moisture that's in your air system. There's a ho or a, a rope right here that you pull and it actually releases both air tanks so you can drain out any water that's in there. The paint job on this Unimog was definitely done by the low man on the totem pole. As you can see, they did zero prep work. I don't think they taped off a single thing in this whole Unimog. You can see one of the mounting system. This subframe on the back of this Unimog is a diamond shape. And what that allows it to do, this entire frame can actually articulate and keep your box level. That's kind of the, the amazing part of the Unimog engineering is the subframe mounting system. This one came with a couple boxes on it. These ones back here are plastic. We'll be removing those and putting in some custom ones. Ladder. Just got a simple latch on it. All right, starting up here. We've got some bracketry. I'm assuming these are for some ladders because they've got, or not ladders, but shovels and um, accessories along those lines because there's all sorts of them under here. Some right there, there's some more over here. Trailer connections, license plate lights. Massive trailer connection point. There's another one stored up there. That's the closed eyelet kind. Reverse light, more connections, more brackets. Here's a look at the rear suspension. These kind of give you a look at the portal axle. Sealed drivetrain. It's all fairly simple. But if you look, the axle doesn't come dead center of the wheel. Dead center of the wheel is all the way down here. Let's get a close up look at that. So that gives you a better idea on where that axle is coming in. So that ground clearance under here is just incredible. I feel like we could drive over a Prius and not even know. Let's continue on around the driver's side. Another box plastic 
That is the exhaust for the East Bar. When we get in there, I'll show you the East Bar, but it is antiquated and massive. So we need to get a new one. We'll be doing the same East Bar as we do in our vans. I'm pretty sure these are brake boosters. Box, metal this time. Another box. This one is massive. So the exhaust exits, I'll give you a look at that. Spare tire mount. This one again, very dry rotted as well. So this will be getting replaced as well. All right, let's get a look at the Habitat ambulance back. They open. And they latch right there. Let's crawl in there. Got some greasing to do. A couple options for back here. Uh, one is to just utilize this. A lot of people love these Unimog backs just for their compact size. It's only about five foot five on the inside, so I can't even stand up in here. So for me, I want a higher roof. So we're talking about raising the roof on this one and maybe extending it out a little bit. Uh, eventually I want to get into all composite backs. So we'll be doing a complete composite material. So this whole entire back will go. So it'll definitely go to a good home because these things get reused and used and used. So it will not go to the dump, which is good. Um, so yeah, we've got a kind of a blank canvas right now. I'm gonna go through and strip all this, clean it all out. We're really busy with vans right now. So as soon as I get some free time, we'll start working on this. Came with a couple windows, couple roof hatches. This giant monstrosity houses the biggest East Bar heater I have ever seen in my life. There's no reason we need an East Bar that big in a habitat this size. The new East Bar D2 S2 can roast this habitat out. So we're gonna be ripping all that out, finding a new home. That's the old electrical connections for this whole habitat back here. All that's getting ripped out. We'll go out this tiny little door here. Look at that, feels so fancy. I hope this quick walk around helps somebody. We have some big plans for this Unimog over the next few months, maybe even years. So follow along. We're doing a couple vans now and then slowly try to start transitioning into stuff like this. So this one is kind of our first one, get some prototypes, get some details worked out. Uh, we're going to be doing some rust repair on here. So I'll be filming all that. Uh, a couple spots just quickly on the Unimog that are pretty notorious for rust if you're in the market for one. Spots up here in the windshield, this track. So keep an eye on that. There's a little spot right there that I'm gonna have to repair. This whole windshield will come out, we'll weld all that up. A couple spots on the doors. These lower doors will rust as well. Spots along the fenders. And then the habitat's got some hot spots as well. Um, so yeah. Follow along as we start filming more of this. I'll start just showing some maintenance, some changing the oils, changing the diff fluid, changing the transmission fluid. Um, I'll get into belts, maintenance, repairs. Um, so yeah, follow along. Thanks for watching.